All right, let's let's start with the the first match from from Sunday, the New York Subliners match. Nine and one records of map map ones. First match were were huge for us this entire tournament. This is a, a nice nade. I, we knew that they were going to do the nades because obviously New York's a good good team with their nades. And we, we've we been hit by this before in, in our scrims where you, you get the, the nades onto the guys at the, the double steps here. Or not the double steps, but the, the bar steps. Oh, I got to bring my epic pen out. So, like, we we should have just sent, pe like, everyone mid and one, one person uh, at the stairs. Like, thinking about it, it's so hindsight, but, like, we knew that they were going to use the nades. Like, we knew they were going to with the nades, and they were probably going to probably gonna do it. So, it's so whatever. That was probably a mistake on our end. J Pen credit? No, it's, it's more Pen J Nassim. That's what we call it. The Pen J Nassim. Swaggy Pants, thank you for the sub with Prime. And if anyone asks, uh, is Grime coming in for sub base? Please tell them no. I I, <laughs> I beg that uh, that sub base stays in selfishly, because uh, we're I don't know we're fucking final at that map I guess. Is Grime ass? Grime could be the best map in the world. I still want sub base in for that. <laughs> Grime could be Raid 2.0. Yeah, replace that with a new 6-star. That's what we should do. Straight up. I think Vista this whole tournament was like one that we could fall back on if we didn't get sub base. That's kind of what they were we, like we were trying to do. And then uh, I guess phase it was more so like we just gotta we're, we're gonna pick six star because we beat them on it. That was basically the thought process there. And then if they pick six, if, if they pick sorry, if they pick Karachi, they pick Karachi map four. If they pick Vista, fine, we pick or we play Vista. Hey, Matt Zavala, thank you for the reset with Prime. Two months. Appreciate it. Oh, made the team flip a switch going into the phase series? I don't know. I think I think just coming off hot off a win can do a lot of things. Um, obviously, we had like an hour and a half break in between because phase was playing Toronto. But, you know, that phase watch was what... Man, we we kind of talked about it together. This Ke this Kenny three piece was disgusting, by the way. Um, but we we kind of were looking forward to that match the entire stage. Um, after they beat us in the first match on the on the qualifiers, we were kind of looking forward to that the whole time. So that's kind of what I don't know. I I hate to say that was like their their finals, but it kind of was because once they, I think once they realized they like they could beat Phase. Anything, I mean, everything was off the table. Like, they were winning the tournament no matter what. Like, that was the final step for them. Like, once we beat FaZe, I knew we were winning the tournament. Because I was just like, that was, that was the final piece that was missing for them. And I think that just gave them the utmost confidence going into the finals. I think I think Brandon put it the, the best. He was like, we were on stage and he, he said something like, yeah, that was the final Infinity Stone or some shit. And then I was like, yeah, now we just got a snap or something in the finals. Because that was that was literally the only the only team we were missing. Yeah, he's been the blender. I mean, ever since 
This is a good start, though. The P2 to P3 was great. And then obviously this P4. But the, this second half of the game is kind of where it got away from us. Like once, I think it starts with this P5. Maybe it's a P1. Yeah, Paco starts out, what What does he start out? He, at least right here, he's 7 and 14, but he ends up positive or something like 32 and 30 or some, something like that. Wait, let's uh, let's tune into the listen. Running away with this one early. If they approach a 100-point advantage, let's get over to listen now with Optic Texas. Ken's comms are fucking disgusting, dude. He obviously steps it up at um in in matches on land, but his comms just. They're so good for, I don't know, like coordinating things, directing things. It takes like a special set of skills to be able to like micromanage players when you're not even in the play. Cartier, thank you for the tier one sub. Appreciate that, man. Oh, and I missed I missed Costa DLN Costa sub with Prime. I appreciate that. Do you hear the comms throughout the match as a coach? Uh, if we have the headset on, sometimes I wear it, sometimes Damon wore. It. I think Damon actually wore it the entire event this event. So I'm gonna just let him keep that shit. <laughs> oh yeah, Ken Ken Ken's comms the whole event. were just I mean. People say he's the glue, and they're completely right, I think. Someone asked, uh, does FaZe use three subs on this map as well? No, I think I think it's this 2-2 two -two for pretty much every team. I could be wrong. When, I, when we played them, I haven't, I haven't watched the... I haven't watched the full FaZe match back. I haven't watched the full New York or FaZe match back. This is the first time I'm re-watching it. I watched the, the Grand Finals back, but I haven't watched these back yet. So we'll see. Someone asked JP about the new AR of the bow. Um, I mean, I think maybe they'll test it, but I'm not sure. I, I'm assuming it'll get GA'd. I, I have no idea. I don't really know what patch we're playing on. I would assume we're staying on, or we're going to the new patch, but yeah, I don't know. Don't mean to be federal. What was behind the sloppy cod the first two days? I'm not really sure. We were just not doing shit that we usually do, and then I don't know. We, we, we. I think what happened, uh, at least after the Toronto match, I mean, there was there was shit that we ha that happened that invasion control that should not have happened, and it even happened in this in this New York one as well. But we went into a, a call with each other after after Saturday night because we were all in our hotel rooms, and we were on a Discord call for like. I want to say 45 minutes to an hour and we kind of addressed things that we wanted to talk about going into Sunday because we were like all right we got to talk about our search because obviously we just lost the search to uh what's it called to to Toronto and we lost the six star search to to Miami um and we talked for like a good yeah like 45 minutes an hour kind of addressed things and I don't know maybe maybe that helped I, I would assume it did but just getting on the same page for other stuff uh, was probably the final thing, but also you know they just came out and played on Sunday. Like, dude, Ant was screaming the whole day. I tweeted this out, but Ant was absolutely screaming, like yelling in the comms, and I'd never heard them do that shit. So I don't know. he was hitting new levels for for everything. Was Kajukin? 
in decoys. He's, 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 he's looking at the back. He's looking at the back. He's there, Kenny. I'm waiting. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny, one shot, one shot in the back, one shot in the back, one shot in the back. Hey, short okay, 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 okay. We gotta focus, Kenny, if we can. I'm watching him. I'm one shot on top. I'm watching back. I'm living. I'm watching my back. I'm going back. I'm going back with you. We're missing. Kenny, 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 back, Kenny, back. One shot, Zig. One shot, Zig. Brandon, he's one bullet, Zig, on time. Nice. Looking for more. He can be the back. He can be the back. Better energy. No, no, no. You think your bar to the team will make the comms video today? No, unfortunately, the, the coach comms, uh, like the coach Mike, isn't recorded in the CDL comms videos. It's like me or Damon, like you won't hear us in that. Yeah, this the second half was like, they kind of put us in the same cycle that we put them in the first half. Mediocre Nick, thank you for the sub. Appreciate the tier one. Real PD, thank you, man. Appreciate the resub with Prime. And uh, Torres, Jose, thank you for the sub. Tier one, appreciate that. Thank you guys all for the subs and the, and the support today. How come you and Damon don't get championship voice? I have no idea. That's not that's not a question for us. But Damon, it was funny because like I didn't really like notice it. I mean, I guess I noticed it today or that Sunday. But Damon was like. Damn, we don't get the whites? And I was like, oh shit, yeah, you're right. But it's whatever. I don't need the whites. As long as we win the championship, I don't, I don't care. JP, was I nervous watching phase game five? A hundred percent I was. The fuck? We wanted to win that one bad for sure. I was kind of upset that we didn't win the, the high-rise control. Or I shouldn't say one, but at least went to round five. We should have at least went to round five because uh, we just had a guaranteed uh, defense just by capping B point. We'll talk about it. This is, this is an insane run. They, so they have three streaks here, right? <coughs> so they have three streaks and like three hills, right? I think they're just trying to use the streak to get us off time, but they're they're not like in positions, I guess, to capitalize off of it, right? Oh, it's only players for championship whites? Okay. I mean, it doesn't, uh, to me, it doesn't matter. I, I don't care about what I wear. I care about if we win. We're up 2-1 on the high rise? Yeah, I know. I'm saying like we, sh we should have... We should have um, at least got B point on that round four offense so that we can guarantee defense round five. I don't care if we lose the round. I don't care if we get defense round five. That's kind of what my mentality was. Leith Devil, thank you for the sub with Prime. Appreciate that. This is a perfect screw. He, he he says, I'm calling, I'm calling it. I think this is the right play. You get the guy, or one of these guys towards the right here, and then collapse. I don't know what Paco, did Paco think that they were already, he's like looking for someone and then turns around. But they, they, they try and play tight, but we just collapse from all sides. That was perfect. We get streak. He was trying to get inside, yeah, but it was kind of like, I don't know, he was still... He was still looking. He wasn't trying to get inside. If he was trying to get inside, he would have stayed. I mean, he's trying to look for the kill, obviously, but he would have just instantly dipped if he... Like, he wouldn't have held this, and he wouldn't have held this specific angle either, right? I don't know. I think they were just, they, like, he wanted to get a kill. I think, I know his, his thought process. We're calling this streak. He wants to kill the guy streaking, but he can't find him because he's streaking over here. And then he's just trying to find some type of kill to, to trade the possible streak kill, if that makes sense. So he's trying to just, he, it's a last ditch effort to try and get something for the death that they're going to have. And then he just tries to play tight with the team. That's, that's definitely what's happening. Holy shit, we have 678 people in here. Thank you guys all for tuning in. This might be a, a new a new record. I appreciate you guys. It's a good map one though. 
is exactly what you would want to see if you were an Opti fan. Ken went off that map. I think he, what was he on, like a 9 spree to finish off the map? What did he go at the, towards that P5? Oh, it was 8. Going into that P1. That was, that was so fucking clutch. Uh, I won't talk about, I don't want to talk about the searches. I, this high, this first high rise, I'm not gonna lie, like, we didn't play it too well, but they played it really well. I think they're the best high rise search team in the game. I think Paco might be the best high rise search player in the game. The way he can create timings on things that people are, have just given up and then get two pieces for it is fucking insane. There, how many times chat was like, he was just making a play like, Outer propano over here, someone's watching it, and then instantly they turn around, he hits it, and gets a two-piece. Like, that must have happened like three times this map. But I, I don't want to go over, I'm not going to go over searches, I'll go over like the clutches and stuff, obviously. Um, in the other matches, and like the bomb defuse stuff, in game five, of this. As you said on stream, we took a lot of ideas. Yeah, exactly. Like, we, we lost that map, but we kind of... We gained a lot from it, if that makes sense. Because I think they played it the best out of any team. Like, they're very, very good at that map. Like, hindsight, we, we could have we banded versus them, but we had just had that really bad six-star versus Miami. And we weren't really comfortable with that, so we were just like, okay, we, we have all the reps that we got on the high-rise, we might as well like square up with them with, with all those reps and maybe we'll pull out the win. Uh, but we did lose it, but again, we, we took some of the stuff from that and from all the reps that we had in, in the qualifiers for the, the phase one. And that was the big one. That, like, that, that map too was the entire like, tournament. Because if we don't win that high-rise search, we don't win uh, the match. Uh, so it was good to get the high-rise search win over them, because that was like what we were pulling for the entire stage with those, the map pull shit. Why are more offenses won this year compared to last year on control? Uh, the maps, it's just how the maps play. Uh, but this, this is, this annoyed us. Because I think this is the same thing, the same exact situation where uh, against Toronto the previous day, there was two guys on point, and we had three people around here. And I think AG didn't realize that there was a second guy on point, so he went to go and play for spawn kills, trusting that there would be a 2v1, but there was actually two guys on point. So it was just a 2v2 rather than a 3v2. And that's what he, what he said, so... Like, they get the point, and then, like, the fact that they're getting these A points before the Bs was so annoying to us, and obviously something we still have to fix, because it's, it's, it kept happening. Like, it happened twice in the last two days. Um, and then here, like, I don't know if we're afraid of them being closer, being able to cut, but I think, I think AG should go and, and try and cross to hit this guy out, because everyone else is, is going here. But he's, like, even if he takes this route, he still has to meet this guy's gunfight, and now, like, this number seven doesn't. We don't have info on him either. And then just cap A. Congratulations on the event. Hey, appreciate the guys. I, I see a lot of congratulations messages. I'm not gonna be able to answer all of them, but uh, I appreciate all of them for sure. Yeah, Miami is also good at six star search. Honestly, they they were playing it well. I think we were just we only had one rep on it, but like we were comfortable on it and, and like when scrimming it, but it was. I don't know, we were doing some stuff that we, we usually didn't, didn't do, like strat-wise. JP, is this your first land major win? Um, I, I would consider Pro-Am Vanguard a major win, but it wasn't in front of a crowd. So I don't know, it, it felt a lot different. This is my favorite one so far, obviously, because this one at least had a crowd. Why did New York, or sorry, why did Toronto pick Subbase in finals? Uh, I'm not sure. I think the one reasoning I can think of for that is that they were thinking if they beat us on that map, they mentally have won the series because they're going to be like, okay, they're going to be like, we're going to be so shook that we lost our first Subbase and we're not going to be able to regain from that. That's the only thing I can think of as a reasoning why you would pick it. But I mean, in my opinion, that's just, it's too risky to give us like a comfort pick map one like that. 
Still 90 seconds. The positive 17. I, I, I understand what they were going for. It's like it's the dagger. Like if if we if they beat us on sub base, it's a dagger 1-0. We're not confident anymore because we just lost our best map going into the finals. I, I see what they were trying to do, but I don't. I, I don't know if you can give the comfort like that. Any signs from the weekend thinking this is our tournament to win? Um. As soon as one, uh, as I mean, I think winning the high rise search versus phase was really good, f like uh, for me at least mentally, because I was like, that's what we worked for. Like we're now up 2-0, we can close the series out. Obviously, it goes to game five, but once once Blandon clutched the one v three, I knew we were winning the tournament. Because that should, dude, that's that's some play that happens, and you're like, if if you don't win the tournament off that, like I don't even know how you can like predict if you can win the tournament because that shit is. That shit was that shit was fucking nuts. That might be like top five clutch that I've seen in a fucking while. Cause that that won us the series, and then I think won us the tournament. Like, cause that was so it was so massive to beating Phase that like that was a three that's a three three round guys. That's a a three three round is so important. Like, you go up four three, and then if you win that next round, it's like a dagger, obviously, but. 3-3, three, three, instead of being 4-3 because of a 3v1, you clutch a 1v3, it's, I mean, it's so clutch. Stone M, thank you for the sub with Prime, appreciate that, man. You have an answer for why FaZe lost so many S&D Sunday when they were a solid S&D squad? Um, I think they just have to relook at 6-star like, like we do, um, because obviously they didn't look great at it. Um, and, and Invasion was one of their, their trusty maps, and I, I don't know if they won that this weekend. Maybe they won it once. So yeah, they, I guess they just got to relook at the maps. At least like Invasion, because... I don't know, because that was definitely one of their like comfort ones going into the tournament. You think Faye's gonna be working two times harder now? Maybe. I mean, I think it's it's time for us to double down too. I think people get complacent after wins, but and you've seen that. Like every team that's won so far has gotten second at the next one, right? Or third. So like now's the time to double down. If there's a time to double down. Whole energy of the team changed. Sim seemed to oh seemed to change after the clutch and carried on to the finals. Yeah, I mean, I I would say even just the start of the the phase series, like that map one, the energy got massive. But again, like the clutch was like, I can't even tell you how much that impacted like the entire team. I think the clutch just won, it literally won us the tournament. I did not see us losing that tournament after the clutch. Because like we were saying, I think I think for them it was like the final step was phase, and once they conquered that, uh, they they just they, there was just utmost confidence because they were like uh, now there's nothing stopping us, you know. I love to see the boys on Rio again. Uh, dude, honestly, I kept seeing these messages of like, oh, you guys were hiding that the whole time. And it's like, I don't know. I mean, our scrims on it weren't that great. But once we got to land, like, it was kind of like sub base map uh, major one, where it was just like, oh shit, we actually might be fucking good at this shit now. Like, we're not doing the same mistakes that we were doing in practice and in, uh, in the stage. So we were, I guess we were comfortable on it. And We were definitely. I don't. I don't think you'd say we were hiding it or, or waiting for the right opportunity. It's just like it kind of snuck in like sub base major one. Yeah, 
question there from Hydra. He was frustrated. How many energy drinks did Shotzi drink? Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he really drinks energy drinks. He doesn't really drink energy drinks at all. He drinks just water. Maybe one at like the beginning of the day, but if he drinks too much like energy drinks, he'll just he'll be bouncing off the walls. It'll be too much for him. Yeah, he does. He definitely tries to stay away from caffeine. He doesn't drink coffee, maybe one energy drink at the beginning of the day. If that's it. Hex said he only had tea for Texas or, or breakfast. Yeah, he did. Well, he had like food, obviously, but he had like a green tea. Yeah, he had a sore throat the, the the final two days on Saturday and Sunday. But Sunday he fucking turned up, so I don't know what he did. Uh, maybe because he had breakfast with us or something. We might have to pressure him to getting breakfast every time, I guess. What are your thoughts on the Renetti? The thing is insane. I think the Renetti is the big reason why you see ARs being able to contend with with rivals because it's such a it's such a easy back pocket thing you can pull out in close quarter situations. Otherwise, I think you see the ARs getting completely shit on. I no, I wouldn't say completely shit on, but like they'd be a lot like have a lot worse stats than they do. What were the coach's reactions to the clutch? Bro, I was fucking screaming. Because when he, when he originally, like, he went to cafe and then went towards bomb, I was like, uh, there's no way he's winning this. Like, it should not be a winnable situation. And then he got the kill and got the bomb down. I was like, oh, he's winning this. As soon as he got the bomb down and got away, I, I, I was like, he's winning this shit. The process is going to be sick. Honest question, do you think co-MVP of Shotzi and Brandon is better or was Ant clear-cut? I think Ant was clear-cut MVP, but I think I think Brandon had the biggest impact plays on us winning the tournament. 100%. The 1v1 he has in this control, or the, sorry, yeah, this control? Is it this control? Maybe it's the phase one. I think it's the phase one. Yeah, because we don't win around here, right? We get 3 0 Yeah, it's the it's the it's the phase one. Oh, Toronto, sorry. Yeah, in the finals, I'm fucking tweaking. The the one v one he has on on Toronto in the finals and control. The one v three he had. The bomb diffuse round in this uh, in this game five. There were a lot of impact clutch plays that he had that literally win us the tournament. But I think in in total, like MVP, I would give it to Ant. I think you make an argument for sure because there's like if he doesn't make those plays I don't think we win but in terms of like consistency of crazy star performances like it's Ant but Ant don't tell me I mean don't get me wrong like Brandon had a fucking insane event too Do you know if the comms video will be a YouTube or Twitch video? Uh, it'll be on YouTube. Like, it'll be on Twitter and YouTube, I would assume. So, yeah, obviously, invasion control is something we got to work on. Like, we, we end up beating Toronto in finals on it, but this one and the previous Toronto control from the day before uh, was, not, was not pretty. Then we go into Rio, and, like, we won against Carolina on Rio, but I think New York is like a different team on Rio and we were expecting to play this map against New York and it was just I don't know it was it was fucking different I don't know what the I don't know what happened because we got three out in the control but we go and and slam them here I'm telling you like 
before the before we actually went to land, I didn't think our Rio was that great. Like I, I wasn't expecting to play it, but it kind of like switched with our Karachi. Like our Karachi, we started playing a lot worse than when we scrim it. Like Karachi was actually going into the event was probably one of our best hardpoint maps in scrims. But again, you would always see us in matches have those weird those weird off maps where it's like things are going wrong in the P2s, the P3s or whatever, uh, maybe P5s as well. And then it kind of flipped going into the major where it was like Karachi was now one where we weren't even like doing well in scrims on it. So we were like, okay, maybe we got to play Rio because we were doing a little bit better on Rio in the, in, the, in the scrims. And then we were playing these matches against like Carolina and obviously against this one, New York. After this New York one, we were like, oh shit, we might be final at Rio. But we were still not going to play it against FaZe. Not really against FaZe, you said. It's gonna be we were going to let them be choose between Karachi or, or Vista. Did coaches think Dashi had the fuse? I, I thought he didn't have it. Brandon was the only one on the team that thought he had it. And it was only because he had those other situations before in the tournament where he was like instantly getting to the bomb and didn't have it. So he had the feeling like, oh, this was more different than those last two times. And I definitely have it this time. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck like made you think that. Cause all of us in the dugout didn't think we had it. Ken didn't think he had it. Ant didn't think he had it. And AG did. The only one who he said it and he said it right when he picked up the bomb, he's like, I got it. And everyone, no one fucking believed him, but he did. But it's only because he was in those other situations where he was like, I didn't have it those other times, but this felt so much earlier. Like, I, I had to have had it. Focus on the P2 setup and rotation. 15 seconds remaining here. Number eight in Sky is going to be kind of the first one over. As he starts to cheat over and get set up. We had some really good breaks on this map, too. I think both times that we played it, we started out like 40 or 50 to zero, something like that. Today. Or not today, but on Sunday. I can't wait you guys to, I can't wait for you guys to hear the comms video of him after the 1v3 clutch. Cause what did he say? He said something like I'm trying to remember. He 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 wins the clutch and he goes, I'll try that, I'll try that any day or some shit like that. It was it was so cold. It's actually you'll hear it, but that shit was it was so cold after he hit it. Cause he was weak going like when he was at the desk. And then he reach out and he goes, I'll try that, I'll try that any day or some shit like that. Bill of the Beast, appreciate the sub with Prime. Thank you, man. Appreciate all the subs today. You guys are killing it. Oh shit, we're at 900 viewers. I actually think this is a record. Thank you guys for, for breaking the, the channel record. Or actually, I should say record without raids, because I think I got raided by like one of the guys before. Record without raids is insane. Thank you guys. You want to hear the rest of the comms on the winning map of Rio Finals? I think they're going to put a lot of it in, in that video. Our P3s are, were, were a very big focal point for us on this map. Specifically working on them and we we did pretty well on pretty much all of them. Oh Shit, we hit 1k. Hey, appreciate it guys. Holy shit. 1k without raids is insane. Thank you guys all for tuning in Marsifu, thank you for the sub with prime appreciate the tier one What did you say before the game for Rio before that you tweeted out? Um, I'm so mad that they didn't record the, the coach comms, but I, I don't know. It might be in the process. I don't know if, if JP was filming us. Uh, if you don't know, JP is the, the videographer for us as well. He's, he's, he goes by JP as well. Um, I think it was something to the extent like I was the last one to speak to them because uh, Damon had already talked to them and I was like, uh, what did I say? It was like, next time we speak to you guys, we're champ or we're champions or something like that. And then I just muted out. And I was like, I was thinking to myself afterwards, like, oh shit, what if we get fucking comebacked on? What if it's like three, four comeback? But I was like, I was trying to, 
I was trying to give him the confidence to be like, you're not losing this map. But I don't think anyone thought that they were going to lose that, that fourth map. Jesus, Chapman. After beating FaZe, did you guys know you had the chip in the back? I thought so. I thought for them, that was the final step. Like like Brandon said, that was the final like Infinity Stone. Diorama, thank you for this uh, the Sub Prime as well. Scrims today? No, Hugo. We have no scrims today. That'd be wild. How much of an impact do you think the map set played in winning the grand finals? Um, honestly, I thought we were winning regardless because after we beat FaZe, I just had the confidence of it. But once we saw the map set, we were like really confident. I think Ken was the first to say it, but he was like, this is a 4-0 map set. Hey, most likely. Appreciate the resub, tier one. Thank you for two months. I think this. I think the sub base pick was them saying, you know, if we w like first they're co they're also f comfortable on sub base and they played us well on it in the first one and they were thinking if they beat us on sub base map one, they've won the tournament because they'll have first the confidence of beating us on one that we're undefeated on. We will we will probably be like demoralized because. We had just lost our map in the grand finals for map one, so it's like it was. A, it would be a, like a complete morale shift for both teams. But I don't know, it's it's a it's a risky move to give someone their comfort pick map one like that. Do you think there's a disadvantage for the voice at major four online? Uh, no, because I mean major four is still at land. It just won't have a crowd. Yeah, sub base was their pick. Appreciate all the congrats messages, guys. Did we pick Rio or did they? Uh, we picked it. We picked it over... What was the decision? What am I thinking? Well, what's the last map that I'm thinking of? We beat we do we beat Okrachi, they beat a Vista. Oh, we vetoed it over six star, yeah. Or we played it over six star, yeah. What I thought it was gonna be was I thought they were gonna pick six star map one and then have us pick sub base later on in the series, map four. That's what I thought it was gonna be. But then they picked sub base map one and we were like, okay, we'll just play real map four. How are you like when Brandon clutched the 1v3? Um, me and Damon were screaming. Just Manning, appreciate the sub tier one. Thank you. Yeah, I, I wish I could go even more. In, I probably should go more in depth with this, but I, I want to keep up with the chat because you guys are all chatting and there's a, a bunch of you in here. I would go in more in depth with this stuff. Maybe for the other matches, or maybe we'll do it another day and like revisit this in, the, these matches and do f more in depth stuff. Please tell me someone with your camera has live reaction. I think during it he may have been on stage. I'm not. I'm not sure if he was in the dugout for it. I don't know. So you can hear player comms in the coaching area of your games? Uh, one of us can. So Damon was actually wearing it the entire event. I wore it uh, major one, and he sp we split uh, the time during major two. But we won the tournament, so I'm going to let him just use that shit for the, <laughs> the rest of the year. I'm not going to lie. I don't need to. Dude, hearing the comms can sometimes get even more stressful for me. But it, it is fun. Like when, it, when you're in finals like that and they're just ripping, it, it's fun to, to hear it. Where's the calm? The calm has to be there, and it is there. Nice play from 
Karachi HP ban has the same effect as your Rio ban did. All the other top teams play it, so we don't have to. Yeah, basically. Honestly, Karachi and Rio are both like fine bans against top four teams. Can you show the comms when they went crazy in the P4 at the end? Uh, the listen at the end. Yeah, we'll watch it. We're gonna watch all of the the matches from the major here. Or sorry, the the Sunday. Thank you for the sub, Omar, though. Appreciate the, the five months. Damn, the five months. Crazy. Run a splitter and both wear the headsets? Um, We would need another headset, though. It's like a it's like a league-provided headset thing. I, I, I should ask them, though, if it's possible. I didn't think about that. Like, if I could bring my own headset and just and, and bring a splitter. That's a good question, actually. Thoughts on the trophy breaking? Dude, that shit was so funny. I don't know if I like they want me to tell the whole story about it, but just know me, Ken, and Paige were all mind blown. Because we were the ones to witness that shit. And said it? Yeah, no, I know he said it in the, in the TS. I don't I don't know if he gave the whole breakdown though, because he wasn't there. I, I told him we told him the story, but it did it, it broke in, in TSA. I'm at five. Uh, did TSA pay for it? I think they're going to put in a request to, or Paige is going to put in a request to or something. <laughs> Radiation, you're such a troll, bro. <laughs> Try to throw it like a football. That's crazy. Optic tweet? What did Optic tweet? I, I've stopped strolling Twitter on stream, by the way, because you never know what the fuck's going to pop up. Wait, I don't see Optic Tweet. Oh, they tweeted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me see this shit. This, uh, this, is, this, is the, <laughs> this is the trophy. This is at the airport. Yeah, uh, pretty unfortunate. Let, let's see what Ant said. I mean, the thing is, I wasn't there, dude, so I'm only... In the story from like a fucking from Ken's POV, right? So I guess they're going through like security or whatever the fuck, right? They're going through security, right? Can you fix it? We're we're, we're getting a new one. We're we're in the process. All right, I'll I'll tell the story. I was there too, so I don't you don't have to hear his voice uh on my stream when I'm take uh, when I'm talking about it. But dude, so we're going through security, right? And we get in line. There's only maybe like twenty like actual flyers in the room, like twenty people going to actually take a flight so pretty quiet like not no one really there we are putting all of our stuff in you know the bins and stuff Paige is right in front of me she has the trophy she's putting the trophy on its side like laying flat on in one of the bins and she's like yo i'm pl i'm putting it flat she tells the tsh agents like this is important i'm putting it flat like it's not there's no way that this is gonna like move or shift like we're good here right they're like yeah you guys are all good this will be completely fine so we like leave our, our the, the bins, we go through um, the metal detectors, whatever, we pop out the other side. We're waiting for it to go through, you know, the machine. So we see it on the little x-ray thing, you know, that you know that the security sees uh, from our point of view. And when, you know, the, the, the trophy's like going through, we just hear something, we hear like a, a boom, and we're like, oh, that was probably the trophy. Like, we're, we're basically, yo, yo, stop, stop, stop. Kind of like telling them like, yo, that was probably the trophy. Like, we might have to like take it out or something or reshift it, whatever. And as soon as like we're saying that, they just keep it moving. And you you hear the conveyor belt start going and it goes, G -g 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 and you just hear the fucking thing shatter and everyone in like the room heard it. Like all like there was people in front of us that like we didn't had no idea we were completely like MP, NPC random people were just like oh my god was that important or whatever and I was like yeah that was a trophy um, <laughs> that we had won or some shit and but it was so funny because you could just hear <laughs> and it, it was just fucking exploding in the little like box that you see the bins go through 
And what apparently would have would happen was even though it was like laid on its side with the the conveyor belt and with the flaps that like it goes through, it kind of like tilted and shifted upwards. And so like the, the top of it kind of got stuck at the top of the, the box. And you just see as it's coming out of the, the flaps, you just see like little plastic pieces of the nut just completely destroyed coming out. And we're like, oh no Paige was like no what the heck and it's like the tsa agents were they were being so apologetic because they realized it was their fault um and they had like a supervisor come and like like talk with Paige and stuff like that but it was oh my god me and ken were fucking it was it was so apparent to everyone that it was completely fucked like once it was in there it was so funny but like also sad obviously because we were just like what the heck like they they literally told us it was fine and then that should happen and th not only did it happen it was like we heard the first initial uh noise and we were like yo yo stop like that's probably the trophy like we, we can't break it and they continued it on and you just hear the complete breakage of it and it was like oh dude like what the hell but I don't know, whatever. Uh, it, we got really lucky because there was a, it was actually a person who worked at Toronto Ultra right behind us in line. So she was like, I, yeah, I saw everything. Um, they kind of took care of it. And she was like, I'll, I'll get you in contact with the Toronto people and we'll like help you out with this situation um, with the TSA people. Cause um, I'm assuming we're going to try and get, you know, them to reimburse it or whatever. But that, it was like, me and Ken were just like, oh, what the fuck? Like, what did they just do? And it was funny because everyone, everyone in the room heard it. Everyone knew that shit was completely gone. Because it was just like, and you just hear the fucking thing shatter. Still a minute to work with. Not liking what they're seeing maybe on the... It was so depressing. Um, I don't want to watch, the, uh, again, like, I don't want to break down the search stuff. I do want to watch the, some of the clutches. I want to watch the, the bomb one, like the bomb defuse one. Sorry, I just don't, I don't, I don't want to, like, go in, in depth with, uh, S&Ds for us. I never usually do that. You guys remember what round it was? Was it three... Was it 4-2? Was that what it was? I think it was 4-2. Or no, was it this round? Was it 3-1? No, no, because it's AG and, and Brandon, right? Yeah, no, it, was this, it wasn't this one. This is the one we lose. Yeah, yeah. Because that was a time where he was like, okay, I wouldn't have had it, but he realized in the moment in the other one, like, I got this one so much earlier, I, sh I should have this. 4-2? All right. Well, not expect evasion SD to be our best, but I don't mind. Yeah, honestly, we we played this hella well this weekend. We didn't lose it, right? I don't think we lost it. We lost a six star, we lost a high rise. Oh, Kenny had like one more bullet. When does the process video drop? Uh, I have no idea. Probably, I guess, sometime at the end of the week or next week. If I guess. Octane was saying the crowd hated draws. Yeah, I, I think there was a lot of draws chance and stuff. All right, here we go. This is... I, I did not think he had it. I think there's a bug with Codcaster with uh, the 7.5 because he doesn't get it at 7.5. Don't get me wrong. Oh, this is a weird situation because he says 
this is kind of like a miscom, but it's kind of on us for saying this because we, we've been calling this fire truck or fire car now a lot, even though this is fire car. This is this is a Lamar truck, but we like because it's on fire, we've been calling it fire truck. So when Brandon said, oh, there's one guy fire truck, AG thinks it's by him. Like he thinks he's in a 1v1 over here at the truck where he's at. He doesn't think like he would have been faster to hit this guy out. So that was like kind of just a miscom, but also not a miscom because we definitely do call out fire truck sometimes, but it's it's we should 100% be not using that call out. But he still gets a kill anyway. Yeah, I don't know if it's a grace period or Codcaster glitch. I think I think you're right. I think there is a grace period. But he gets his kill. I think we lost the round. Brandon even is even, Brandon's even going for the fist pump because he he realizes that he thinks he got he got it. He's going for the fist pump right here. Like he must have got it at the the millisecond or something. What's a grace period? It's it's like a it gives you like a little buffer that it will still work, but I I think it's more so the cod glass or glitch, but or it's it's more so like it the timer starts when you when you literally press the button to pick up the bomb rather than you pulling out the laptop, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's probably like a point one, point two. I think what he means by the grace period is the fact that it's like it's when you press the button, not when you pull out the laptop. Or a Codcaster bug. I've, I haven't really tested it out, but he must have got it. Whatever it is, he must have got it at the millisecond that you need to get it to. Like, see, it says it's 7.4, but it already says he's been diffusing. So, I don't know. Maybe he got it directly at 7.4. Or maybe this, this set it at 7.5 as well. But it might, it might be that buffer that, you know, that grace period of 0.1 seconds. Because it says 7.4 and it says he's already diffusing. Cause see, it says diffusing, and then it says diffusing target A. Let's see if we can slow that down. Oh, I couldn't pause it in time. One second, chat. So it's, he's already diffusing at 7.4. I don't know if it's a 0.1 grace period or if we weren't on his POV, if, it's, if it said diffusing at 7.5. I think, I think we're gonna, whatever, maybe it's that 0.1 grace period that you guys were talking about. How did Giazzo like that? Oh, if you mean the drawing stiff, uh, I'll put exclamation point draw. I use Epic Pen and I use a little tablet that I can draw on the screen. Like this. But that was... I didn't think he had it, but fucking he did have it. And that makes it 5-2. Draw a crown on top of Bruce. I might have to. Elite Reaper, thank you for the sub with Prime. Welcome, man. Did you guys watch VOD after you guys won? After we won the tournament? No. After we won each match? Yeah. Well, actually, technically, we didn't have enough time for after the phase to Toronto. But after we won the entire tournament? No. I think we all watched it by ourselves, but we, we didn't watch it as a team. I watched it because I couldn't fall asleep for a little bit. Like, we went out for a little bit. I probably went back earlier than some people. I got back at, like, probably 1.40, 2 o'clock around that. I watched the, the finals again, and then uh, I tried to go to sleep. How fast are the next series picks and bands? Bro, they literally... So we finished the phase match, they literally pull me off stage, and in two minutes I have to start doing the, the picks and bands. It was only really, it was really, really uh, important for us, actually not important, but it's really funny because 
the match before our phase match was phase versus Toronto. And that shit went to fucking game five, round 11, or game five, round 10, whatever. I think it was round 11, right? It was game five, round 11. So we already had our vetoes that we were going to pick for both teams set out. So all I needed to do was go into the next series, and I already knew what we were already be doing. So we kind of like were already prepared to whoever we were going to face. Who's with you for picks and bans? Uh, Damon and usually we'll bring like we'll bring a player or I'll go back and talk to the players about like if they want a specific side or you know something something that we didn't expect was going to happen. What, what do we want to do? That was a big W. Big W to uh, just set the tone for the the tournament, or sorry, the Sunday. Alright, let's go to the let's go to the phase series. Give me one second, I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. Wait, the phase series was uploaded after the finals? That's weird. Who's calling S and D strats, JP? I gotta know. Uh it's mostly mostly ant, but you know, if if someone wants a, a specific play or they see an opening or do something, but they'll they'll call it out. But most of the time it's most of the time it's ant. All right, I'll be right back, chat. All right, chat, we're back. All right, let's get into this fade series. All right, so big map one. Obviously, we're team A. And uh, we just picked six star map one because, you know, we, we ended up beating them on it at the in the major qualifier and obviously they vetoed sub base and we knew they also like vista so there was no point picking it because they could possibly just pick it map four anyways and that's what they ended up doing and had an absolute map in this series working on high rise paid off the search one was huge yep 100 percent that's why, that's why you see teams work on their map pool like that. All of those reps, random fucking round 11 wins or losses, all those reps during the stage were completely worth it because you knew what the goal was. The goal was we were going to play it versus phase and hopefully win it. And that's what we did. It's the entire reason why we played those maps. It would have been cool to also win the high rise control too because that's the other one we were working on, but... I'll take I'll take the series win. On the year is optic gonna find three, four dead in the feed. On this P2 rotation, you're gonna be set up now. And might have a K, a 10 KD on this side of the map. <laughs> Straight up. He's gonna have the one on one on the pinch, but a BZ you don't win it. Great time for the four down on this scenario. It's five seconds till the next hard point allows you to really set up, but now with 15 seconds in, the push really starting to build. Two players lurking, trying to catch people. If they can't prop the Texas, it's not gonna starting to build. Two players allows you to Why was FaZe looking the wrong way after breaking the B2? Because they didn't expect us to spawn out here. I wouldn't expect us to spawn out here either, but I guess it was not only it was white white time. But six is kind of still in the back here. But he thinks he left the spawn, and because they just spawned out over here, they think they're gonna break on into the hill. We're still spawning out here, and then they're gonna trap us this way. They didn't realize that this guy spawned out. It's kind of hard in the moment to realize. Do you guys play Karachi HP at all this weekend? Uh, no. Again, in the scrims, it kind of, I, I, I said I was talking about this before, but in the scrims, it was kind of like, took a back seat for us. It wasn't, it, at least before in the major qualifiers when we were playing in matches and we weren't looking good at it, it was still good in our scrims. So that's why we'd, we would still play it. But once we got to land, it wasn't even looking good in our scrims. So we were like, trying to find another map and it ended up just being Rio. Like we were doing a lot better on Rio. And then we didn't lose the Rio the entire weekend. I think we played it three times. Will this be a YouTube video or, or will VOD be available? I'll, I'll post the VOD and I'll post the, uh, the whole thing as a YouTube video. Or maybe I'll break it up into the matches. Like New York is one day and then FaZe is another day and Toronto is the last one. We'll see. 
I think I'll just put it all as one entire video though. seconds left on rotation a BZ versus Shotzi and Shotzi he struggled at times in this matchup to rock this is a funny finesse this one-way door shit is so cheesy it's actually so cheesy and it's a clown for that one dude but he plays it well three different videos would be better for the YouTube algorithm True. I, I think it's like, I don't know. I'm not really breaking down the stuff. I'm kind of just talking with you guys about it. So, yeah, fuck it. Maybe I'll just break it into three videos. Which hill is changing? All of the hills are changing. It was funny because in the, in the Saturday, we couldn't hold shit. But in the Sunday, we did a much better job holding, uh, holding hills. Like a much better job. Ants in the pool. Bro, if Ants in the pool, you, you might as well just like chalk it up. That dude, that dude would like every gunfight. Pool versus pool guy. No more Sharksy is depressing? Yeah. Part of me wishes that we could just revert and stay on this patch and just play on this this six star for the rest of the year. Are your comms going to be in the process? I don't know. I, I don't I don't know how much of my comms will be in the process because they don't record it from the CDL end. So it's only on if JP's um, the microphone, if he was there when we were talking and, and it would pick it up. Which is unfortunate because I thought it, I thought it used to at least pick up the mic, the coach's microphone, whenever they would give us the comms. Like it does in the online matches because we're all on a Teamspeak server. But they don't. I guess they don't record it on in land matches. I guess it's funny because, dude, Ken, Ken is always talking, and you especially see this in in land matches. I think it's a little bit different, but I think Brandon talks a little bit less in land matches. But that is, it's completely made up and doubled for what Ken uh, like talks in matches. Because Brandon, I mean, Brandon is locked in. Uh, but Ken kind of makes up for it. Thank you for all you do for the team. Hey, appreciate that, man. Running, returning. Appreciate the subscription with Prime. Thank you, man. Bro, that gives me so hype when you, when he's like about to get a kill, plat. Cause you know after that, when when his his toad was rising like that, he would have been dead. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit gets me hyped. If we would have got that kill, you would have heard the the hardest dead in the world. Urgent, thank you for the subscription with Prime. Thank you, man. When they start screaming, I know it's like raps, dude. They just have so much confidence when they're streaming like that. <laughs> what was he trying to say? Was he trying to say? Did he almost say Zach? Like like Draza? I was trying to think of what he said here. Yeah, yeah, he says Dra then Zach. Like, <laughs> that's funny. That's actually really funny. Yeah, he was thinking these. Maybe the, co the the game plan, the comms were just like LED that he was just like. He, he saw Dashy or some shit and like on his kill feed and he just thought it was Draza. Yeah. 
Oh, Draws did kill him? That's okay, yeah, that's definitely what it was. That's funny. JP, how much do you feel your rollers changed from NYSL to now with Optic? Do you think you're uh, more involved now? Um, I think I'm a little bit more involved now. I think I was still involved a lot. Um, the only time I felt like I didn't really, I wasn't really involved was uh, the first year of me like kind of being an analyst slash coach because I was just learning the game and learning how it was as a pro level or at the pro level and in scrims and stuff. So like the first. I would say like six months of that game was me just learning. But I feel like ever since then I was pretty involved. Maybe a little bit more because there's just more responsibilities with Optic, but... Hey, Grand Sentinel, appreciate the, the resub for seven months. Happy to see the, the boys bring one home. Me too, man. a lot more phase slays in the feed. They're starting to get a little bit more locked in. They're flowing with the map. They're picking up the pinches. Shotzi, another chance to make a play. He's able to get on in. This is going to buy his team some time. But as you said, Sip able to earn that cruise. When will that come into play? This is a big break here. Pitches, slays in the feed. They're starting to get a little bit more locked in. They're flowing like he doesn't get this map. kill, but somehow he... Pinches, Look at the timing he gets to get a bit more with in. number six. So he must go around this pillar as with soon as map. like that guy pinches, goes around the other side. Oh shit, Grand Sentinel with the 10 gifted. Hey, appreciate that, Grand Sentinel. Thank you, man. Get a W in the chat for Grand Sentinel with the 10 gifted. Thank you, my guy. Our right, listen is a problem for you as a coach that the enemy team can review the VOD and analyze. Oh, uh, not necessarily. It's, it's only usually like maximum two minutes and it's in respawn, so it's a little bit harder anyways. Another chance to make a play. He's able to get on in. This is going to buy his team some time. But as you said, Sip able to earn that cruise. When will that come into play? And now FaZe will have to take their time through the back. You're going to see a beast is going to spawn out. Unk, what's it after being like an analyst as coach? I have zero clue, dude. I'm riding this wave for right now, but we'll see. Kenny will pick that up and he'll back to deal with it. And then Kenny able to get another one. Shoddy wins his one. And they'll stay inside of the point. Still spawning in the back will be Atlanta Bay. We play these spawns really well. Because they're split spawns. This is this is such a big hill. That first was broken. I kinda wanna just detail this hill specifically. And gets the timing here, so. He goes around this way while this guy goes around this way, so he gets the timing on the first guy. And then people yeah, are probably going to be like, yo, why does he chow the back here? Like, why would he do this? Why would he just, like, sit in a corner? But this buys space for the rest of the people coming off spawn to just hit the front of the hill. Because this guy's going to have to take a gunfight. Gonna buy his team some time, but as you said, Sip able to earn that cruise. When will that come into play? And so, because he takes the gunfight here, I would assume this is, like influencing this spawn and then that's why they spawn out and they spawn out and it's very big because ants gonna spawn mid and once he spawns mid he knows that one guy is gonna be poolside so that's what he's playing for this guy takes a deeper route which is unfortunate but they can cut this guy off he can now go front side they can try and bully out a guy white that's what they do and plays for another kill too for the other guy that spawned towards p2 and now we're breaking now it's split spawns we're still splitting so we have to watch both sides and we get kills both sides this is a very very big break for this for this map p3s are p3s are massive don't break down dude every everyone knows this Everyone knows that everyone knows that when you when you spawn out here that you have to be looking for people. But it's, it, it, can you can you do it in the moment? Can you recognize what needs to be done all players on the map because it's going to be splits? Did anyone did anyone get drug tested like Clay? Everyone gets drug tested. They pick like two people every every series to get drug tested. Do you listen to their comms the entire map, or are you watching the CDL broadcast? Uh, in online matches, we're able to listen. In land matches, only one of us, like me or Damon, can listen. But I, I gave him the headset this time. And I I'm just going to let him keep it, because we won the tournament. But I was saying, Major 1, I listened. Major 2, we split time. And then Major 3, he listened. So I wasn't listening to the comms uh, live this time. Push this scrap time. That is a big 20 for Optic, but 
Also, yeah, it's six stars, so it's gonna change unless we stay on this patch. You're gonna have two players there, Simp and Abizi, uh, versus Kenny. Kenny soon will have the help from his... Holy shit, guys. We've been over 1K viewers for the past, like, hour. I appreciate you guys all for that. This is insane. To have 1K viewers without a raid or anything is, is massive for me. Like, I'd, this is a fucking record. So, thank you guys all for, for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Good luck. I don't know what I think Ant uh, on this hill is it was it the first one or was it was the second one here where he dives in Yeah, he dives in here and I was like, okay, this is the time to fucking shine, dude. He gets to kill on the BZ. Ken gets a massive two piece on I want to I want to talk about this. But Ken gets a massive two piece taking a route like this. So we're waiting for each other. On the Tiki side, number two and number three are going to work together. Number four is a little bit further back, but he can go like the half wall and pick up their like dub. But Ken makes a play to, to play these, these people holding this route. So he gets this guy blue, and then he goes down the mid stairs, and now number seven has to worry about him. So that takes the focus off of Ant and puts it on Ken, right? So number seven can't really look at Ant anymore because he has to worry about his mid stairs. So that takes the focus away from Ant with this kill. So that's a big kill by Ken, and then he even goes down the mid stairs and kills him. Massive. Massive. And then you get the final kill on Cell. And now you all know they're spawning P2. And can get pushed up here with his little pistol thing. Gets one. Can continue to finesse. Jesus. How annoying is it? Because not only do you have to worry about him, you have to worry about people watching over him too. Like, Ken can watch over him here. Anyone over here can watch over him. This isn't stair glitching. This is, I mean, I don't know. Is it technically? I don't fucking know, dude. Everyone plays that shit, so. I don't think it's considered a stair glitch because they're above him. Like, they can, they can see him, right? Like, they can shoot him in the water. It's just hard because it's the water, right? It's the same as being at a heady. W voice crack, yeah. I lost my voice uh, yesterday. I, I just got that shit back too. Or no, what was it? Yeah, I guess Sunday night. So I just got it back this morning. Yeah, it's the same thing as being as Anna Hetty. But this is a big break too. Like, look at this. They start pushing in towards like under our what's it called under our plat. This is a big kill by Brandon. First off, him getting this kill. We also get the kill on the guy flanking through the the vent. That's two. Now we're breaking from every side. Number five has to give up the stage, so he has to go back towards you to play for these guys mid here. That opens things up for Ken. Number three, AG realizes that he can take a route, so that we're breaking from three different sides. And this should just instantly be a break. Like there's, it's a four v two on hill. Ken gets the first kill. We know last guy's contesting on time. And then we, we should just win off of this. We actually split them because we, we look into white, which kind of fucks us over. But once we get this kill, we know they're all spawning blue anyways. And then we can just play for it. Ant got fucking loud. Dude, I'm telling you, you guys are going to watch this listening video. And this guy is fucking screaming every call out. Every call, he's just fucking screaming. It's actually, it's actually so hype. Thirty-nine, thirty-nine. That's fuck. That's insane. Thirty-nine, sixty-four hundred. Draza. Also, I think you put up the damage record, right? He had sixty-six hundred. Unfortunately, we might not get Sharksy anymore if we move on to the new patch. So I'm hoping we stick to. The, I'm hoping we stick with the old patch, but. That might have been the last uh, Sharksy map. Alright, Harris, Harris search. So I, I'll, I'll watch this. I don't really want to break it down, obviously. We're still not bringing down search, but... I'll just talk about um, kind of 
what we were doing with the map pool stuff um because this was big i think this is it was massive that we were able to like get reps on high rise at the stage because not only were we working specifically for this matchup if they would pick high rise search map too because i mean there was a chance that they could pick invasion search rather than high rise search because they're more comfortable i think on on uh, invasion but they knew like we didn't like it and they would always beat us on this map so we we were like pretty sure they were going to pick it regardless so that's why we wanted to work on that and honestly it the whole stage all the reps were completely worth it for this because the more times we play it, the more stuff we ended up learning. Even if we lost it, we just kept learning from it. And, you know, Ant probably even said it, but we learned a lot from just that, the match before, the New York match, like we learned a lot from. So, you know, even though we were losing matches, or sorry, losing maps on high rise specifically, it was, it was just all in the benefit of winning this map. This is the only high rise, like, search that really mattered to me. Now, I'm not saying it's like our, you know, comfortable search map now, but I'm saying like that was the catapult like or like the, yeah, that was like the, the thing that catapulted us into, you know, this is a possibility of beating phase because we go up 2-0 here. That's a massive win. Yeah. And then people ask like, oh, why are you testing your rap pool? Th this is why. This is the exact situation why you do it. Hey, Growly, appreciate the, the subscription, Tier 1. Thank you, man. But, like, the, I'm, I'm proud of the guys because we obviously worked hard playing this map a lot. Um, and we, like, I wouldn't say, again, I wouldn't say it's, like, our you know, a good search map for us necessarily, but it's the fact that we were able to, to win this one, which was like the goal. That was, it, it made the entire, like all the online matches worth it. Do you think it's going to go to like other team, other times when on high rise after phase went up 2-0? Do you think that it's going to go like the other times? No, no. When we went up 2-0, I was still confident. Like, I could, I could definitely have seen a way for it to still go game five because obviously FaZe is a talented roster. But I was like, after we won the, the high race search, I was like, okay, I think this is their best. This is definitely our best chance to win versus these guys. Because we were still confident on invasion and that was going to be map five regardless. So I was like, okay, we, we might win the high race control. And I still think we should have at least went round five with that. We'll talk about that. Um, and we might win the Vista hard point. But at least if it went to game five, I'm still comfortable with our invasion. Is there an API or something for CDL stats? Unfortunately, no. I think the closest you'll have is probably breaking point. I'm not sure if they give out data um, for like for free on an API or something like, like that, though. Oh, he meant phase going up 2-0 on SD? Oh, and like in the actual map? No. I mean... 2-0 and, this, and this, I've seen many comebacks. 2-0 is nothing. Just because they went up 2-0, it doesn't, I mean, maybe what they went up like 4-0 or something. Yeah, then that would have been, that would have been something. But 2-0 is not, nothing, nothing too big. IGN Maz, appreciate the sub with Prime. Welcome, man. Have you ever seen a full sail in scrims? Um, probably not the not one I can like think of on the top of my head, but I'm I'm sure that's happened in scrims. We were close to it on the what was it the LET match? What did we get? We got up to to six four. When we lost it. Are there dead callouts and scrims? A hundred percent. 
not not nearly the same energy like as a match or even a land match i would say it goes like scrim energy online match energy and then like land energy is like all the way up here this dude Ant put him on skates here. This was insane to watch. I said, what the fuck did he just do? Slides, knew that he can get behind the barrel, jumps on top of the barrel. Like, that was some, that was some insane movement. Like insane finesse right there. That was some Halo shit, exactly. I, I think I said that to, to Damon as soon as this happened. I was like, that was some Halo shit right there. Crash on the championship, bring out, bring home the champs ring. Hey, that's the that's the fucking plan, bro. That's the plan. Again, we'll have a little break here because, like, obviously they deserve it, but it'll be the time to double down. We don't want to be like the other teams where we win one, but then we fall off. You know, no one cares if you peaked in the middle of the season. You know. Did someone break their controller? Uh, no. I actually think Ken used a different controller on Sunday. Like he broke it in and and played with it, but I don't think anyone broke their controller. No. Would you say this was the most difficult major win compared to the other two this season? Uh, difficult. I don't know. It's hard for me to say difficulty because I wasn't on the teams that won in the previous majors. But like we did play all four or all three of the other top four teams. First off, congrats. Second one off for winning like this. How will it affect the changes happening to the maps? For example, six star hard point. Um, so I'm assuming we're going to move to the new patch. And with that, I don't know. I mean, just whatever you thought about six star hard point, just completely forget because it's, it's completely different. So we're just going to have to go back to the drawing board on it anyways. It's unfortunate, but I would, I'm assuming we're going to keep playing it and it's just, everyone's going to have to adjust. New six star is dog shit. I... I haven't. I, I want to keep an open mind, but the, my initial thoughts were that it was a lot worse than what it was before. What about the trophy change? Ooh, the trophy change. I completely forgot about that shit. Uh, that's gonna be interesting. Chat. Were, were challengers playing with three, or were they still playing with with two trophies with the new trophy stuff? I haven't really kept up with challengers too much. Oh, they've been playing with three. Okay, interesting. So with Damon having the headset, is he relaying you info differently or how does that work for you guys? No, he'll just listen. If, if there's something like important, he'll say like, oh, this guy's about to do this or something like that. But we're all watching the same feed. So we're just locked in. Biggest difference from this year's team to last year's team. What did you lack in last year? I think the leadership that Ken brings. And stuff like outside the game and like obviously like Dan was doing it inside the game but I think there's a lot of things that Ken does like post maps or uh, in between maps and stuff like that that uh, was definitely lacking I think AG as well I mean AG is guaranteed fucking guaranteed kills Accountability, yeah, that, that's true too. 
I just think the discussions we have are a lot more, uh, what's it called? Productive. Ken learned from Sam so well and brought it over to us. I think he was still doing it on the on the LAT roster as well. Maybe he wasn't as vocal as, as Sam, or I mean, maybe he was just as vocal, but he was doing the same thing behind the scenes on LAT that he was here. Or that he is here, I should say. Why does Shotzi have a folding chair? Uh, he's, just, he's just comfortable with that. It's just preference from players. Like, What he likes is he'll usually play with a gaming chair, but he doesn't like when there's these uh, armrests on it. And if they can't take the armrests off, he, he'd rather just play with the folding chair. Because he likes to, he kind of like brings his leg up and like brings his arms down here, but he doesn't want the armrests to fuck him over like by hitting them. So if they can't take the armrests off of the chair, he just uses the folding. We have to seal the phase right window nade. It's not even phases. Like uh, Vegas did that. We were. I was actually watching because we were we were practicing something similar. But they uh, Vegas did a nade on on New York, where they double naded here too. And that was like earlier in the qualifiers. So it's not. It's not new, but I, I see what you mean. It definitely is a good nade. You just have to get the good timing for it, and the guy has to go straight to the right window at the start of the round. Because you do have the timing for it. Do you think Grime gets in? Uh, maybe, I don't know. I hope it replaces the new six star of anything. If that should replace the sub base, I'll be pretty hated, but that's just the selfish. Uh, that's just me being selfish, yeah. I hope sub base stays in? Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I hope we see. I hope, I hope Subway stays in. Not only because we're undefeated on it, but yeah, it was a great map, guys. Like, <laughs> Oilers win, Optic win. Let's go. Except y'all cheer for Dallas, so the that might not or some might not be a fan for the next two weeks. I, I'm a Devils fan, so I don't I don't really root for the Stars. I guess the Stars are like my maybe my second team, but my guys have been out for a fucking minute now. So anyone but the Rangers. If the Oilers beat the Rangers in the finals, do it. Just, I can't have the Rangers winning. You see Tokyo and Paris. I'm guessing they won't even be in the game till champs. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even know they added new maps. Wait, can we can we actually talk about the? The developers with the DLC maps, because they actually cooked this year with DLC maps. I'm not gonna lie. I want to give credit to this uh, Sledgehammer like map makers, because they obviously six star. I, I, first, I don't think the the hill changes. Let's just talk about the the maps, not necessarily the hills. Like six star Vista, Rio, all good like solid like hardpoint maps. Um. People are saying Grime is good. I haven't even seen it yet, but people are saying Grime is good. But they've actually been cooking with these DLC maps in terms of like competitiveness, you know? Did Meat play out too small? Yeah, Meat was Meat is definitely too small. They got loud after this one. After this one, I was we were so proud because we were like, that's what we fucking work for during the major qualifiers, that specific moment. But it was still obviously, obviously time to close out. Hardest kill in the game? I don't know. Probably Brandon.
Uh oh. Shotzi doesn't need the time. He has Kenny looking over him. Matrata, that is an explosive barrel, so he's going to get cut down. Nah, don't watch the losses. The losses is how you learn, bro. Because I think this round four was control for us. When we go up 2 1, and all we need to do is cap B to guarantee defense, that should be our number one sole priority. And it didn't look like that. that's what it was. That's why I kind of got mad. I think we, we controlled this, this at least not going to round five. Sure, if we would have lost the round five defense, that's on us. But not even getting to round five because we didn't just focus on capping B was my problem. Damn, 1,500 viewers. Thank you guys all for tuning in. I probably got like 30 minutes left. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to skip to the 2-1 round. I, got th I have like 30 minutes left. I have to actually go to the office at 11.45 because we have to do like a little content thing at 12. So let me, I want to watch this 2-1 this round. Because th the ticks were, I don't know if it's going to show the ticks, but we all we needed was, was one cap to get defense, pretty sure. Sorry, yeah, we got to round five. We just, I meant getting round five defense. Sorry. Round five offense and round five defense are way, way different. Like here, like I thought... Like, once we get these kills, I think AG, he's at the left street. I think he should be stack, double stacking here. Like, he goes and it's it's fine to play the windows and spawn kill sometimes, but if you, like, if you're just going to get one and get traded out, it is, it's just not worth it. Plus the fact that, like, they still have people on the, on the map, so they get kills towards B side without a trade. We should have just been stacking there, in my opinion. He needs to go. You need stacking into their heads. Bro, it's 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 not even drilling into they know. It's like it's even funny because like they'll be they'll even say like guarantee even on like invasion, they'll say like yo guarantee be here, guarantee be here, but we're not guaranteeing B. So it's like what the fuck are we doing? Like that's something like me and me, Damon, and like even Ken has brought up too, where he's just like, dude, we're saying guarantee B, but we're not even fucking going to the point. <laughs> you know, it's like what's the point of saying it? Control, control is still something we need to work on, obviously. So far. Like uh, those, I mean, we won the invasion in the finals, but the two invasions we lost on, or sorry, what was it? The two invasions we lost versus Toronto and, and New York were like, there were a lot of mistakes there. We didn't play those well. Grass on the wind JP, too many second places. Yeah, dude, I know. Uh, then we lose around five defense, unfortunately. Or sorry, around five offense. But we could have gotten defense. That was the whole point for me. It was like, we just cap B, and we'll get the, the defense. Uh, we'll watch the second half of this, of this Vista. Actually, you know what? I, I only have 30 minutes. I'm just going to go straight to the, the game five, because I want to get in the, the, the major finals as well in this stream. Crunch AP, well deserved, man. Hey, appreciate that. All right, which which rounds you guys want to watch? Obviously, we'll watch the the Brandon round, but let me see. Were there any other clutches in this round? Oh, the Pred went one v one. That was unfortunate. Wait, uh, or no, I'm thinking of the other Pred one v one. I'm I'm thinking of the the Toronto one that he almost won against Cami. What uh what round was the Pred one v one chat? Oh, it was right after the 1v3? Okay. All right, we'll watch the 1v3 first then. I've watched this round like fuck it 50 times now. 
With draws on one side of it, the question again is what position will he be in? What Not Cammy, Kleenex, sorry. I'm I'm draws, tweaking chat. But looks like he wants to challenge Broken this time around. Yeah, first time here. First time in this position. I heard Toronto and then I saw a C and I assumed it was Cammy, but it was Kleenex. That's my bad. Not to be very good at this, finding the nades, finding the angles onto this player. Last time through though, it was what was your thought as Dashy won the 1v3? I thought he was, I thought there was a very, very, like, small chance that he could win it. I didn't think he was going to win. It, it was a, the once, but once he got the bomb down, I knew he was winning it. But I don't know how the fuck, I don't know how the fuck he did that shit. I'm not going to lie. He's been this side and he's been lurking, can't get caught. So I guess the trade for the first kill. Only 23 seconds, mind you. Wraps it to A. He has zero clue where this guy is. Now he knows he's at the palace wall. He knows he has to get the bomb. He knows this guy's in mid cut. He sees him. And then he snaps onto Cell right here. And that was fucking insane. Instantly goes for the bomb plant. Now Sure, you could say like, oh, why is Cell chowing here? And yeah, you could say that for sure. I think if Cell's gonna chow, Draza should also be chowing here too. But Draza takes a back foot. So he, he like Draza probably assumed that Cell was gonna let him plan as well and they were just gonna play a 2v1. But if, if Cell chows, I think Draza also has a chow so he can't get the bomb down. You have to do one or the other. But it was, I, it was just a miscommunication on what they wanted to do. Because one's going for the chow, one's not. Or, you know, one thought both were chowing, so... He gets the bomb down. As soon as you get the bomb down and gets and gets to cafe, I think we won. The, I think the crowd noise here actually had a really big impact because I think I don't think Brandon thought he was diffusing necessarily, but I think uh, Draza thinks that he got a different timing with with how Brandon played this because of the crowd noise. Because they hear, he, they probably hear the crowd, I would assume they hear the crowd noise, and that's why both of them turn. Like, he just goes for the diffuser, because I, I even asked Brandon, I was like, oh, did you hear the crowd? Is that why you thought he was, like, on bomb or something? He was like, no. But I'm thinking Draza thought he got weird timing initially. Maybe not. But then they see each other here. Brandon's weak, 77 health. Pulls out the pistol. And that, that little strafe to the left literally wins him the gunfight. He shoots straight to the left and straight back like he wins the gunfight. Everyone's fucking screaming. Everyone's screaming because of that shit. That was insane. And, uh, dude, the, the, the coldest thing was right here. He's like, I'll try that. I'll try that any day or some shit like that. It was, it was so sick. You'll hear it in the comms video. He's like, I'll try that any day. Seeing Ken when he see, when he screams at the cam is so funny. Yeah, this snap was insane. I'm thinking. Yeah, I think both of them should have chowed or both of them lay off and then play the two v one retake. That was just the miscom. When's the comms video dropping? It's dropping tonight or today, sometime today. Cell actually beams in off the heady right here, or sorry, off the cross. Fifteen S and D clutches this year. That's fucking nuts. Draza in phase one, that one back hat is for sure, but they have the 4v3. You have a chance to silence the crowd as you start. I hope it's a 30 minute comm video. I think it's like, it's gonna be around like 20 minutes, I would assume. As I saw the first draft by Joey, he's in the chat right now. Joey, if you, if you have the time, let me know. But it was like 12 minutes before he even added the New York series, I'm pretty sure. Where will they be posted? Y'all, you'll find it on Twitter or YouTube tonight for sure. Seldium just watching the flank. There will be two on him, though. He's got to buy as much time as he can. I don't think he's going to be ready for this. Hey, Mexitron. Thank you for the tier one. Or, sorry, the, the subscription with Prime. Appreciate that. Welcome. Chat, we got 1,300 viewers in here. I fucking love all of you, dude. This is insane. Do the coaches hear the comms during the match? Uh, one, one of the coaches can. But someone actually thought, uh, got a, brought a good idea up and it was like wait let's watch this one going real quick but it was like basically can i bring a splitter and bring my own headset so i'm gonna ask the, the league after, actually if we can do that 
This was so big that he just aped him. He just he just went straight down and Abizi uh, still didn't regen, right? Because he's 53, 53. He's starting the regen now. So he's still weak. Yeah, Abizi was not full health yet. Alright, watch the final round too. So they were, they were trying to play for the, these people in the cafe and not let them be seen from, like, deep Nero. Then they just do some Navy Shield shit, instantly hit out a BZ because they know he likes to play this corner. Get the bomb down, smoke it out. Now just play the pl the post plant. I think they get a kill on the 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 pinch here, right? On Brandon. But this is a huge kill by by Ant here. Because no one's watching the deep A street, gets the kill. Ken gets a huge kill here by st he stays alive mid tank and that's massive. By not dying here, and keeps it a three v one after getting this kill. Now it's just it's twenty seconds. There's two guys like there's too much time. We're kind of like split apart. We could play for it. Even if he got that kill in Ken, I think AG gets the trade regardless. And he wouldn't have been able to get to bomb. Hey, Raziel's day. Thank you for the subscription with Prime. Bro, look at look at Ann here, dude. Ann's fucking going super sane right here. Hey, Raziel's day. Appreciate the five gifted as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. But uh, that that match was just so big. I think winning that match was their like finals. I, I had so much confidence that they were gonna win the tournament after we won this match. Cause that was the that was like the final hurdle for them, you know? It was the final hurdle. FaZe was destroying us the entire season and then we finally beat them. There was nothing stopping them after that. I'm not gonna lie. Alright, let's move on to the grand finals. I got I got like 25 minutes. I got to head out of here maximum 11.50. So they give us sub-base map one. You guys were asking, you know, why would they pick it? Uh, I kind of said before, but I think the biggest thing is this. We were 11 and one in map ones this stage. So I think map one's so huge because it sets the tone for the series. Like us winning map ones is so important for just not only like confidence and momentum, but us going into a search already being up 1-0 is, is just like, okay, we win it and we're already up 2-0 or we lose it and we're still tied, whatever, you know? So they picked sub-base. We weren't expecting it. We were expecting it to play six-star map one, but they give us good side sub-base. We're, we're going to challenge them on that for sure. Um, and they, these guys, I mean, they just, we could probably win some sub-bases against some teams without even calm, calming at this point, I feel. Like, we're... I don't know, we're just on another level on this map. Hey, Natty Light Beam, thank you for the three months, Tier 1. And Zach the OG, thank you for the subscription with Prime. Appreciate that. Slower map, the, your guns were hot. Nah, I, I don't think so. I don't think it has anything to do with slower map. I think they they thought they played. I mean, they did play us well in the first series on this map, and they're still comfortable on it. Don't get me wrong; like they were still undefeated before we played them, and they were just thinking we're gonna we're gonna beat them on this map, and they're gonna just be demoralized, and we're gonna have utmost confidence because we just beat them on their undefeated map, and then we will win the series. That's that's in my, if if I'm Toronto and I did this, that's what I'm thinking is gonna happen. Like if we win this map, it's over. Because the morale is just going to be completely shifted for both teams. It's our new fortress, dude. I think we're. I don't know. I think we're better on this map than we are on fortress. Do you think you'll get a player again this year? I don't know, probably not. 
Stun's not going to land. Scrap's going to be able to keep that final few seconds open for anyone. Ultra now on the long journey across the new. And they really are just so far away. What is it about this map that makes you guys good? I think we just play well with, with three or four ARs with it. And we just uh, we just know what the fuck each other is going to do. Like, we know how to win this map. And it helps because I think AG is really good with an AR as well. And Ant is, you know, good with an AR too. Like, if he wants to pull it out. And just having the confidence of just being really good at it, just confidence is a huge thing in Call of Duty. You can tell me AG was a flex this year, and I believe you. Yeah, he basically was. At least, dude, every sub at the beginning of the year was a flex. I keep talking about it on stream, but we played Invasion, Sub Base, Terminal. All three of those maps, you're using four ARs, pretty much, so... All of this quote unquote sub players were basically flexes at the beginning of this year and even into like stage two. Then you guys get like four straight hundred point clubs and fortress hard points. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we were way better on fortress. Now I think about it, but I think it's harder to get a hundred point clubs in this in this game. You really don't see many hundred point clubs in this game. Superstar plays already 13 kills, leading the charge for Texas. Sibling out of nowhere, he pulls out 13. Dead silence activated. No noise, but no problem for Envoy. Finds it. Dashi immediately looking for that trade. But the teamwork you can see from Optic, it is going to be massive in the assist. Spawns were more consistent last year. That's true. Over 100 points. And we move over to a new hard point, the final in the set. Before we go back to the first one all over again, that ruined tank. And this ruined lineup as Kenny has managed to fight on through. Great work from Optic, that point is theirs. I mean, they just took that with absolute ease. Zero seconds flat to make that break in Optic, making a statement. It's funny, out of all these matches, the closest was the Heretic series. Holding the time once again. Uh, the I wouldn't say so. Oh, you mean in, on sub base? Did they even play us? Wait, what was the score on sub base for Heretics? Because Heretics was definitely not the closest series that we played. That's what you mean. Oh, yeah, you're me specifically on subbase. I thought you meant the series. When do scrims start? Uh, I don't know, probably at the end of this week or next week, starting next week. I think some teams are, are starting to play like Thursday or something. But I think they, like some people are going away to do stuff or we can't play for a little bit or have to do something. AG was blacking out on subbase for Miami. Dude, I don't think we played that map great at all, but the, he had an insane performance and it literally just solo carried us. Because I thought we played that map pretty shit <laughs> against Miami. Will Grind be tested or not? I have zero clue. No idea. We have games starting next week, no? Yeah, well, we have games starting June 1st. So as long as we start up next week, then we're, we're chilling. Yeah, no, it was an ego child, kind of. Will you be uploading the bottom off to work? Yeah, I'm going to be uploading the entire VOD to YouTube. I'll be, I'll upload this entire thing. Oh, 
Watch here, real hardpoint. Yeah, yeah. I'll watch the. I think I'm going to. I'm going to skip the search or maybe watch like a couple rounds of search. We'll watch. Uh, watch the one round where Brandon one v ones in the invasion control, and then we'll watch the the real hardpoint as a as the final thing. Boys play on the first. Yeah, June first is our first match. I think we play Miami first match in stage four. Do you think the aggression and passion is something you work on or does it come naturally? Ah, oh, that's that's all natural. That's all confidence and all natural. That has nothing to do with us working on something. I think obviously working on maps and getting more comfortable on the maps by working them out and getting better at them helps your confidence. But in terms of being, you know, having that passion and and aggression in the comms and stuff is, is all natural. Aggression in the term of like play style, that's completely different. That's something you can work on. But aggression in terms of like, I thought you meant, sorry, I thought you meant aggression in terms of like the comms and stuff and just your confidence. 1.4k, are we actually, at, oh shit, we're at 1.3 right now. Thank you guys all for tuning in straight up. Like this is, this is actually unbelievable. No raid in 1.4k or 1.3k is, is fucking crazy. I love you all. Here. He's trying to thread the needle through the back line. 150 HP gotta be the new norm. Bro, every COD from now on has to be 100, 150 HP. Every single COD. I haven't looked at the stats yet, but I think our our P5s were great this, this tournament, if I had to remember. Like, even though we didn't win the rotation sometimes, we were breaking it. And when we would chain it with, a, like, a P1. I feel like we've always been good at that. I thought Ann was going to go in the corner and someone was going to watch over him, but he, he was trying to get a kill in that window for sure. You said you use RStudio for stats, right? Do you think MATLAB is viable? Uh, probably. I've never actually used MATLAB, but I assume it does like the same type of stuff. So yeah. I mean, you could use Python. I just use R because that's what I'm just comfortable with working with the data. What do you think you and Karma bring differently as coaches? Uh, we do a lot of the same stuff. I like to bring in more uh, analysis stuff with the numbers I, I give and the tendency stuff that I can find. He brings more of the uh, like accountability thing in his experience if he was a player, like you know, what he would do in situations like that. So it's, it's two different perspectives, but we do a lot of the same work with the type of like VOD stuff we do and like working with plays. Like if there's something he wants to bring up with a team with how we just played a certain map or how we just played a certain hill, he'll do that. If I want to do that, I'll do that. Like everyone just kind of has a voice on the team. Um, is there any, any rounds in the invasion search that you guys want to watch? I think the, the first round was actually massive. Winning a round one offense is really big on this map, I think. And getting this first kill, the timing on Envoy pushing up, and then him smoking, and, and Ken just rips this guy at the heady, opens the round, and we just win it. Like, winning a, a round one offense like that is actually so massive. Because it's, so, it's very defensively sided, this map. So that was, that was a huge round. Oh, the AG3 piece. Yeah, yeah. What round is that? That was like early, right? Maybe round th round three. Oh no, it was oh it was already four three. Oh shit, I thought it was early in the round or early in the game. Wait, I want to talk about this. This was some Navy Seal fucking. We call it, we call it Navi CS Go because. 
they're in this setup right here and so what they're doing is you know kleenex is watching envoys mid and the back door envoys watching back door and mid as well like they're, they're in this cross setup so anyone that comes in they're going to be able to kill you know whoever crosses but once ant opens this door they don't have each other's cross like he can't see you know ant come out and and childish right so ant throws his nade see if there's a trophy then he he banks his smoke off Smokes off, instantly hits this guy out. Navi CSGO, bro. You single this guy out. We know this guy, another guy's probably going to be at the mid tank. We're going to have number five play for him here. He gets a kill, but he gets straight out for, by Brandon. Now we get bombed down. It gets killed, but look at the activation from number seven. He's already there to trade this out. We call, it, we call that shit the Navi CSGO straight up. Because it looks like a fucking CSGO strat. Fred shoots his trophy, no? Uh, does he? I think he does. Because he has. we have to get the smoke out somewhere, right? So he, I would assume he does right here. Yeah, yeah, he does. That's what it is. Because the, the nade gets first block, so we know the trophy's there. So that's why we have to open it up for the, for the smoke. So he shoots it. I forgot to mention that. Good eyes. That's, yeah, that's the Navi, Navi CSGO shit, bro. Only because they were in that specific setup. It only, like, really worked out well because they were in that specific setup. Like, if he was playing at this side of the tank, it'd be a little bit more difficult. But because he's playing in this deep corner of the tank and can't see once uh, Ant crosses, I, I guess it, it smoked anyway, so regardless, it would have been hard. But simply because he was in this deep corner here, um, it makes it even worse because the door is open. So he can't really see anything that's going on. I'll watch the the 4-3. This is the this is the AG3 piece. Brandon gets a huge kill on this guy coming out. And then AG just goes nut. Jumps, pistols this guy. Gets to this heady, sees insight, rips him. Last guy back door, rips him. Really good plays. At least Kenny. Still advantage now. We just see that there's no one A Street here and we kind of just make a move to go up here. I didn't like that he, he still had bomb. I would have rather him drop bomb near A side and then push this out. Because if he dies here, it's kind of fucked. But he gets the kill. Now he just smokes bomb. Now you can get the insta bomb down. He even tries to chow scrap there, but you can just get the bomb down. We get the guy mid tank. Brandon picks up our pinch. Really good plays, 3v1, scraps alone. We just win that shit. Really good search. We were, we were final on invasion. All right, I'm going to do the... Okay, I'm only going to be, be able to do one more map, so I'm going to do the, the one run. I'm going to do the end of this one run round, the, the Brandon 1v1. Because this was massive. I think we were playing the, the offense pretty well the entire, the entire round. We were getting these kills. We finally like, guaranteed the, the B point. We're getting kills A, S, and D here. We're just making sure that we put the pressure on so that they're like forced to turtle up in, in their base like this. Brandon's going insane. He's on a nine spree. We just keep getting kills, keep getting trades out. But it's like, it's not enough because we're, uh, we're in this kill, or sorry, we're in this kill battle and we're up so many lives, but there's only 50 seconds. Like we still have to keep chowing, you know? So it's really big. We go through A Street over here. Brandon uses his cruise to buy some time so that we can get pushed up the street. And then we finally get on the point here. We get a kill, get on the point. It gets traded, but the only one that really can get on the point here is Brandon because AG can't cross here. So he gets on the, on, the, on the point. Brandon's here. This is actually where he dies because they, they just collapse on him. But it's the next push that's really important. And it's really important we get there quick because it's, it's only five to 10 lives. And there's 15 seconds, and we gotta go all the way to the A point, you know? We get kills towards Mannequin, and we all we have to do is get the point. Brandon's able to get the point. Now it's a 1v1. If he loses 1v1, we lose. Because we can't get to the point. It's only one second left. Wins the 1v1. And that's huge. We, we win the, the round, and we win the map. All right, now we'll go to the Rio. We'll just watch the entire Rio for you guys.
And then I'll have to leave. I'm gonna post this as an entire YouTube VOD. I will do that. Honestly, this is a good breakout for us. We actually started on the quote unquote like bad side and we're still getting a pretty good amount of time on it. I, I had zero I had zero faith that we would lose the map. Utmost confidence after we went up 3-0. Like I, I told you guys in the chat, but I, I said something like right before the right before I muted out because I was the last one to mute out because Damon talked to them first. I was like, you know, next time we talk to each other, we're champions because I just knew like there was no way we were losing this map. We were comfortable at the whole the whole weekend. They're up 3-0. They have so much confidence and. We were just looking really good in the respawns versus Toronto in this in this series specifically. How many chips do I have? I have a home series win and then I have two chips. I would say, pro am and you and uh and Vanguard, which I don't know. It's not even so much of a big chip because it's it was still was like single limb, but it was. I mean, I would I would still count as a major championship. But this was the first one in front of a crowd that I had. So this was this was fun. This is my favorite one, obviously. A hey, 1400 viewer boys. We're going over the Rio, the, the game four in right now. Appreciate you guys for all tuning into the stream. This will be the last, obviously the last map before I gotta head out. But again, like we were we were playing this map well the entire weekend. I, this was so big for us to play this map well because our Karachi was taking a, a little bit of a step back. So it was very, very important that we were playing this shit well. Yeah, I'm going to be posting this VOD on YouTube. I'll also have it available on, on Twitch, too. I'll make it available. Once we get these spawns and we get the P4, I was like, okay, we hold this P4 and we go up at 50 points going to P5, which we're really, I mean, I think we're really good at P5s. I was like, we're just winning this map. Like, we were just, I don't know, we were just hitting all forms. Ant and AG on this map specifically were just on another level. Ant, again, the entire Sunday, Ant was just screaming. He was having the absolute fucking tournament, or even just the day of his life. Because that Sunday was one of the best Sundays I've ever seen, like, a single player have. Do you think that the team coming from losers has any type of advantage since they just played, or who is warming up the team already in the grand finals? Well, no one's warming up, so... I mean, I guess you could say that they have a... some type of advantage because they just played, but, you know, the other team's coming off of win as well, so... Yeah, that's, that's always just going to have to be a thing because of how the scheduling works. That's always been a thing in COD. You always go from loser finals to grand finals, so, it, you know, that's just going to happen. It has to it has to happen in order for the tournament to work. Ken, big kill. He's holding down this left lane. We're just soaking this P1. We were actually really good in P1s this weekend, too. I feel like we were soaking every P1. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we were soaking every P1 in this shit. Even the start of the, of the maps. When did you guys know you had the tournament won? I thought after the 1v3. I thought we were winning the tournament. I had really good confidence when we won the high-rise surge versus phase, but I, it wasn't like obviously set in stone because they could obviously still reverse sweep us. But once Brandon won the 1v3, I was like, there's no way we're losing this tournament. That was some like fate destiny thing. I was like, we win that round, we're winning the tournament, 100%. All right, well, let's listen to the listening because this... This might go down as like one of the best listens of all time because this shit was just pure, it was just pure dopamine. I was like, me and Damon were so proud when we were, were hearing this listening because this shit was, it was like perfect.
Wait, jump me, jump me. I'm dead. I mean, that's why I thought. I three it up. 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 When he, when he keeps everything in check. Because it's, it's like perfect. To do this in a grand finals, in a, in a game winning map, as if it were just like a scrim, is, is just, it's so insane. Someone also asked what was missing last year. I think the the ex, the a multiple winning experience that that Ken has. Ken like knows how to win. We didn't really have that like last year. Obviously, you know Brandon and Ann have won, but not like in the amount that like Ken has won in in Call of Duty specifically yeah, yeah. recently too. You know what I mean? So. This experience and this type of thing, like what he's able to do in this game four in a grand finals and still be able to perform at the top level doing these type of micromanaged stuff is, is I mean, it, it can't go unnoticed. Like that shit is, is very hard to do. Like only, like only a few people can really do stuff like that. I felt like during this P3 and P4, they could have taken any route and we were still going to be getting kills. We could have taken any route and we would have still won the match. Like we could have been done going some random direction. It just felt like we were going to win no matter what the fuck we did. That's what it felt like for me, and I think it's what it was for them. As you'll see on this P4, we get pushed up on like their side P2. I'm like, when the fuck have we ever done that? Usually, they were just feeling it. See that's AG or that's Ant screaming. You never hear him screaming like that. And the rest of the comms you'll hear in the video, but he's screaming like that in just random moments too. The entire Sunday. It feels like destiny right now. Optic Texas, the listening was absolutely brilliant. The kills have been unreal, and the scoreline is unstoppable. These guys have elevated. They are gone. Nah, it was just, it was perfect. We were just killing, getting pushed up. Ends up on this P5. We'll watch the final, like, find out. final few moments. Battling forward, Ultra Survive again. It's not gonna matter. Optic are gonna do this. They're gonna get it done. The onslaught is coming. Insight can feel the pressure. He's gonna fall one by one. Ultra, your final stand. Here we go. The final trade to break on in. Toronto. Last guy alive. Phoenix pushed out. We get this kill. And it, that's the best. Five for the win. Super and proud of the boys. Sunday, that was a fucking well fought tournament, well fought weekend. Well fought Sunday. I, I told you, once we got the, the phase match, I was like, we're just winning this. That was the final hurdle for these guys. And uh, super proud of them. This is awesome. We're all just like hugging in this shit. This is, it's a long time coming. And yeah, it was cool. Awesome moment. But now we got to get back to work, obviously. So, All right, I got to head out. Thank you guys for tuning in to this uh, Sunday Major 3 VOD session tournament champions so hopefully we can go back to back in uh major four appreciate you guys for all tuning in over 1k viewers are fucking insane we hit our our max viewership without a raid and i think even with a raid maybe um thank you guys for all the subs follows um i appreciate you guys all for the support and everything if you guys came out this weekend and saw it uh live i'm i'm glad that uh we were able to win for you guys and yeah it was just it was fucking perfect so thank you guys for watching uh, i will see you guys probably tomorrow all right, peace, guys.